You know, Leo, what occurs to me about all this is that uh, as amazing, startling, fabulous, unbelievable as this flight out as cleanly as it has been worked out, with the launch right on schedule, the return right on schedule, every function going just as it had been planned, that uh, I think all of us are inclined to be just a little bit, uh, although amazed, we still can be a little bit uh, blasé. Uh, it, uh, it just seems so easy. You wonder what are the limits of man's capabilities in space. Leo, thank you very much for your help during the six days. for the work getting back to you again because I suspect that shortly we will be seeing the astronauts landing back on the deck of the carrier and that will uh, complete the uh, flight portion certainly of this mission but thanks very much uh, for your cooperation and that of North American Rockwell the builders of this fantastic spacecraft uh, out there in Downey California Bill Stout I need not thank you you're on the payroll <laughs> but I'm thanks glad, uh, I'm glad I'm still on Walt <laughs> <laughs> well, I can assure you, assure you, Bill. At least I think I can. I can't really speak for management, but uh, <laughs> I think we both are, Bill. Thanks very much, gentlemen at Downey, and thank everybody else. The flight of Apollo 8 is over. All that remains is to remove the astronauts from the spacecraft and carry them uh, less than two miles to the deck of the carrier Yorktown, which was just two and three quarter miles from the splashdown point. Exactly how accurate uh, the spacecraft was at its impact point, we have not determined yet. It was only two and three quarter miles, 5,000 yards or so from the Yorktown. Uh, the Yorktown originally was scheduled to be about five miles from the impact point. Uh, if uh, uh, these figures would check out on a direct line. It would indicate that perhaps the spacecraft was three and a quarter miles from its uh, predicted impact point, which is an amazing feat indeed after a flight of 570,000 miles through space. The crew uh, of the spacecraft has ordered steak and eggs, we're told, same as we had before we left their last meal on Earth before they went on the space food in the spacecraft, uh, which they have said is reasonably good, uh, sort of a restrained uh, statement. They, they would, uh, they had the steak and eggs and uh, orange juice and so forth there at uh, Merritt Island in their uh, crew quarters before they left on last Saturday morning, just uh, six days ago. We've been talking about their capabilities of, uh, of controlling the spacecraft. I might point out again, we just heard that the first swimmer has gone into the water uh, at, uh, at that point, a thousand miles from Hawaii. The helicopter is dropping its swimmers. First light came six minutes ago and they didn't waste any time. They're in the water. A sea anchor has been attached to keep the spacecraft from floating away any further and to help stabilize it. They'll be putting the flotation collar on in just a moment. The three flotation bags are already on. Let's call in Paul Haney at Mission Control. Paul? He's been reporting on these uh, events uh, uh, sporadically, and we get every report he's got and relay it to you. Sometimes we listen directly. Right now he's off the air. We'll come back when he comes back on. We're talking about the uh, way the spacecraft is controlled, the lift factor. It wouldn't look uh, like this uh, spacecraft uh, uh, would have any lift at all, of course. It looks like it does, but it's got about uh, a 5% lift factor created by the heat shield, the, the blunt end of the spacecraft being a little bit off center so that there is a center of balance below this and the spacecraft uh, heat shield, the blunt end, uh, being not quite uh, perfectly uh, around. Uh, by giving it a little bit of lift like an airplane wing and rolling the spacecraft just to the right number of degrees, they can create more or less lift, uh, bringing the, air, the, the spacecraft up and uh, bouncing it into the uh, landing, uh, cutting down on the heavy G-forces and directing it right to the landing point. 
That can be done either by the computers or by the men in the spacecraft themselves flying it in. We have not heard that they used the, com the uh, manual controls on this flight. Uh, it was probably a computerized reentry that brought the spacecraft right down to the target point. Dallas Townsend on board the Yorktown. The kind of sight that I've never seen anywhere else. I imagine you feel very much the same way. Well, this whole occasion uh, is, uh, is a great historic occasion. It must... Uh, be something like uh, when Columbus perhaps uh, returned from discovering uh, the Americas or uh, Magellan's ships returned from their first uh, cruise around the world. This is equal, uh, perhaps even uh, even a greater occasion than those. I would, yes, well, I, I think it, it uh, may well rank with them, Ron, but it's safe to say also that they didn't get the kind of welcome when they when they got back, when Columbus and Magellan got back, that uh, Borum and Lovell and Anders are going to get a few minutes from now on the flight deck of the Yorktown. This is a, a well-organized uh, reception, and the reception also that, uh, you know, uh, when I think about it, I'm just amazed at, at, how, at how marvelously this whole operation has gone right down to almost the last second. Uh, planned uh, weeks and even months ago. We were told when we came on board the Yorktown that the swimmers would drop in the water at first light about 5.35, and that's exactly when they did it. Well, we've lost that uh, picture and transmission from the Yorktown again. Uh, whether that happens when the Yorktown powers up uh, extra radar or what, uh, we haven't been told, but the radar and all the communications facilities on the Yorktown do cause some interference with our television picture, which of course is secondary to the radar working. Uh, the, the situation as of this moment in our last information from Paul Haney at Mission Control was that the swimmers were in the water, they were attaching the flotation collar around the spacecraft and uh, the next step is for the astronauts to emerge uh, through the hatch of the spacecraft uh, to the harness which will carry them up to the waiting helicopter and onto the deck of the Yorktown. The flight to the Yorktown will be a very brief passage. They're only a couple of miles from the Yorktown at this point. And uh, as the uh, light uh, comes up over the Pacific, uh, the men on the Yorktown will see the spacecraft bobbing there in the water. And probably there will be enough light for them to see just two miles away the recovery of the astronauts themselves. When they get to the Yorktown, uh, they'll cross a red carpet uh, to microphones and perhaps we'll hear a word or two from them before they go down for their first uh, medical checks and their first uh, very brief reports uh, from their remarkable flight to the moon and back. Uh, and then they have 20 hours on the Yorktown before they fly to Hawaii and on home to Houston tomorrow. The future plans for space missions, of course, have uh, been accelerated considerably uh, by this flight. It means that they can keep to the hoped-for schedule of uh, the next Apollo 9 mission late in February or early in March to test out the landing module and uh, then move on toward landing a man on the moon two flights further on in the middle of July. We get back from that 363 feet that uh, blasted off from the Florida launch complex, the moon port, and its first use as a moon port, we get back just to 12 feet of, of the uh, command module, the spacecraft itself. Here is the picture of the whole thing. That is the Saturn V, the big baby that did the job. Three stages of it. Seven and a half million pounds of thrust in that stage alone. And each of the little uh, engines in there generates uh, four to five times <coughs> as much power as one of the rockets, the, the rocket that put up our first man in orbital flight in the Mercury program. But there are three stages, and this was the stage that finally went on out to the moon. The escape tower had been blasted off during the launch phase. This is what went out to the moon. Uh, that service module, so-called, and the command module. And then, just the 15 minutes before they re-entered the Earth's atmosphere, at 10.37 Eastern Time this morning, just a little over an hour ago, these two separated. <coughs> the service module dropped away. Uh, they're waiting to find out what happened to that service module. There was a lot of speculation. It uh, was fired away from the command module, and whether it skipped out of the Earth's atmosphere back into an Earth orbit, 
or re-entered the Earth's atmosphere and perhaps burned up in that re-entry or maybe made a landing in the Pacific. One calculation was it might just be 100 miles or so from where the command module landed. We have not had confirmation on as yet. But this is what finally came back. From all of this that went up into space a week ago, uh, Saturday morning, or last Saturday morning, this is what we've gotten back in scale. But that's the important part, because there's where the three astronauts rode for these six historic days. Let me show you, since we have the model out, what will take place in the flight of uh, Apollo 9, <coughs> which, as I say, excuse me, is scheduled for, I'm not in as good shape as the astronauts this morning, apparently. They're in perfect shape, we've been told. The